Lakeland Currents, your public affairs program for North Central Minnesota. Produced by Lakeland PBS with host Ray Gildow. Production funding for Lakeland Currents is made possible by Bemidji Regional Airport, serving the region with daily flights to Minneapolis St. Paul International Airport. More information available at BemidjiAirport.org. Closed captioning for Lakeland Currents is sponsored by Niswa Tax Service. Tax preparation for businesses and individuals. Online at NiswaTax.com. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Lakeland Currents. We're happy that you're joining us this evening. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about business succession. And by that, I mean, if you're a, let's say you're a small hardware store owner in a small rural community, and it could be downtown Duluth or it could be Minneapolis too, but in the smaller communities, when you have a hardware, or uh, say a, a true value store or an A store that's going to be sold or closed, it's a big deal to the community to lose that asset. And so we're going to talk about how businesses can plan to make that succession a smooth one so many businesses don't have any idea what they're going to do when they want to retire and they just sometimes just close their doors. And so we're going to try to help companies who are involved with that kind of thing or small businesses, uh, how you plan to make that succession smooth so that the operation can stay in the community. Is that a good way to summarize it a little bit, John? <laughs> I, I think that's a fantastic summary. <clears throat> well, my guests this evening are John Bennett, who is an extension educator with the University of Minnesota, the Center for Community Vitality. And we have had staff members on our program over the years from this. It's always been really good information. And you come from Duluth. Your office is in Colquay. That's right. But you live in Duluth. And Bob, Bob Palmquist is a vice president of finance and what else, Bob? Business development. Business development for the Norseman Group, which is a group of consultants who work with businesses on these kinds of issues. And I guess you would, we can talk a little bit about what your company does beyond that, because I'm sure you do other things. Right. right. <clears throat> but let's just talk a little bit about, well, when we did a program about this a couple years ago, mm -hmm. we basically had a, a retired CEO come in with one of your uh, faculty or one of your staff members and talk about how they go into a hardware store or a lumber yard or whatever and have kind of help them plan. Well, since that time that we did that a couple of years ago, your process has gotten much more sophisticated, much broader, and now you're treating it as not just that individual business owner's issue, but it's an issue for the community at large. So maybe just talk a little bit about what we're, what we're addressing here, John. Yeah, yeah, that's <clears throat> right. Uh, so I, uh, my center within Extension, the Center for Community Vitality, has been doing business retention and expansion programming for, geez, probably more than, than 25 years across Minnesota. So for a long time, we've been uh, working with and encouraging communities to uh, go out and touch base with their existing businesses because as an economic development strategy, um, it's always a better bang for your buck to um, keep the businesses that you already have you know, rather than just thinking about attracting new ones. Uh, so we've been doing that for a long time. And a few years back, uh, we noticed that uh, another part of extension that we have uh, uh, kind of that does more work, work with agriculture and farm business transitions, they were starting to see business owners that were not in the agriculture industry that were attending their workshops because they wanted to learn more about how to uh, how, how they could successfully sell their business and transition their business. So we thought that that was pretty interesting. And at the same time, we started to notice that uh, economic developers and city managers uh, from different communities around the state were telling us, hey, our Main Street businesses, our, our owners are, are mostly baby boomers, and a lot of them don't have a plan to, to retire or a plan to transition or sell their business. So we decided that was a good opportunity for us to do some more research in this area. And that's when we decided to kind of dive right in and uh, think about what that research might look like. And before we get to that research, Bob, let's talk a little bit about what your company does. Right, uh, at the Northspan Group, we do a lot of work in with business development and economic development. We're one of those economic development organizations that uh, was just mentioned uh, a minute ago. And we, we saw uh, several years ago, probably going back to about 2010, that you know, the trends out there are that the, um, the business owners are getting older. Uh, the baby boomer business owners are a huge segment of the uh, business community. 
and uh, a lot of them have done nothing as far as uh, planning or positioning their business for uh, the next owner or for succession. And we view that as an economic development problem that should that business not be positioned to sell and the business owner in turn or the heirs of that business owner decide to just uh, close the business up and liquidate it, uh, it's a loss of uh, a wealth generating business and a loss of jobs for that community, which are, nobody wants to see that. And so we got involved back in 2010, more on the business valuation side of things. How do, um, you know, what, uh, what is a particular business worth? How does that business person go about positioning uh, the, the value of their business? Is it the value that they need in retirement to uh, be able to uh, uh, transition that business? I know I have a couple friends that have purchased businesses recently and they're fairly young and it was a challenge to come up with the capital <clears throat> to make the investment. So do you help them with that too? We do. Uh, you know, going back to when we got involved with this, this was right, um, you know, you're, you're uh, at the end of the Great Recession. A lot of businesses had gone through a tough time. Uh, the value of those businesses had, had dropped off because they had probably had gone through a couple bad years. Financing <clears throat> was tough to get, uh, to get uh, some traditional financing. And a lot of business sales um, earlier in the decade were done strictly through seller financing very little bank financing. That's changed now where uh, the banks have become a lot more willing to be able to finance the transition of those businesses. And if they have some gaps and st still need to have a little bit more help in, in putting together a financial package, that's where our firm uh, gets involved. And in. uh, we involve other, other programs that are out there, other economic mm -hmm. development uh, I know, I, programs. I know we think often that this just impacts probably the smaller communities, but you're both from the Duluth area and you both have seen probably what happened when a number of jobs were lost in Duluth. Correct. Where the whole population made a pretty big drastic drip, uh, dip rather. But that was probably from larger organizations going, moving somewhere or closing down. But anytime these businesses leave a community, it's a big impact, isn't it? <clears throat> yes, absolutely. And uh, one piece of data that we learned from the small business development centers is that 30% of uh, businesses that fail, fail because there was not a successful transition or a successful succession uh, to that business. So it's, uh, it's a big deal and uh, communities of all sizes, both urban and rural. I, I've worked a lot with communities in some of these development areas and I know that I've always considered the two worst jobs in town would be the chamber director or the economic development person because there are always so much pressure on those folks to, to get growth. And I think you make an interesting point. You don't have to spend all your time on growth. Sometimes you need to spend it on maintaining what you have. And I think we can drive through a lot of rural communities and see a lot of storefronts that are closed down because those folks didn't have a plan to keep those in business. So what's some of the research, John, that you've got that, that's, that's kind of recent yeah, yeah, great. Well, a few years ago when we started thinking about this, we decided to put together an advisory group with about 10 different organizations that do work in this field. So uh, the State Chamber of Commerce was involved and we had some business advisors and, and bankers and the Minnesota um, Valuation Association. And we put together um, a survey that was designed at asking business, over, uh, business, business owners that had successfully transitioned um, over a certain period of time. So we sent out uh, surveys to businesses that had successfully transitioned between uh, the 2008 and 2012 period and were still open uh, a few years after that in 2015. And we wanted to ask them some questions about what their experience was like, uh, what worked well, what did not work well, what were some of the key challenges, and um, kind of some advice for other potential business owners or communities that might want to combat this issue. And some of the, the findings that uh, we discovered, uh, some were surprising and, and, and some were not. So the way that we kind of approached this was looking at business transition from a couple of different um, angles. One is the kind of the ownership side, so that's the uh, 
you know, the legal things, you know, figuring out uh, a sale price and, and financing, working with the banks. And then the other side uh, that we wanted to learn more about was more of the leadership. So when businesses transition, after that transition occurs, uh, there are several things that the previous owner can work with the new owner on that can help make that more successful, you know, such as dealing with employee issues or, or cash flow. Um, but really just, it's kind of like a, a knowledge management, uh, you know, passing that along to the next owner. Some of those things we found out uh, were really even more important from the, the businesses that, that we heard back from. Mm. Bob, you were going to say something here. Well, we're finding that just uh, mm -hmm. our experience working with businesses uh, throughout the region, um, uh, you know, that information is, is pretty much holding true. You know, if you've got somebody that's looking at uh, transitioning a business, uh, they're either going to sell to employees and or management. Uh, if it's a family-owned business, they're going to sell to f uh, uh, family members. Um, or the other alternative is to sell to an outs outside party and one that might be aligned with their industry or their business or may not have any alignment with their industry or business. And, um, you know, there's a lot of dynamics that go on with, with each, each one of those. Sometimes the, the family businesses are some of the more complicated ones because they have a lot, of, a lot of family dynamics in there that have to be addressed. Uh, but some of the points that John just made uh, regarding looking at management, who the employees are, how do you groom them, how do you train them, how do you educate them to be potential uh, new owners uh, down the road. And these are things that have, you have to look at, you know, years in advance. It's not something you can, you have, that you're going to look at last minute. So yeah. if, if a person were considering selling his or her business, how far in advance would you recommend? Well, this sounds like a lot of years, but, the, but a perfect one would be five or more years. Uh, one of the reasons for that is, is again, educating um, if they're in, internal uh, potential for owners is educating your, your employees or management. Also, it's going to give you an opportunity as a business owner. If you have a target sales price for your business, you've got time to do some value enhancement for your business, making some changes within the operation, um, focusing more on maximizing that bottom line instead of trying to minimize that bottom line uh, for you know, ta uh, you know tax, for tax purposes. For purposes. <clears throat> yeah. Hmm. yeah. So, the Center for Community Vitality works in all areas. I mean, you work in medium-sized or larger cities to many, many rural areas. Mm -hmm. In the rural communities, when you look at populations of 2,500, 3,000, <clears throat> what are, are you mostly looking probably at grocery stores, hardware stores, lumber yards? You know, that's, of, that's a good question. And um, so for, for this particular study, we decided to look at uh, businesses outside of the Twin Cities metropolitan area, so those seven counties down there. And we um, surveyed communities that were 7,500 or less. And the majority of those were actually uh, uh, communities with fewer than 5,000 residents. And we also decided that we were not going to survey farms because that's something that we do in another part of the university. Uh, and we decided not to um, survey businesses that were, um, you know, eye care providers or chiropractors, things like that that are a little more uh, specialty. And we also did not survey uh, businesses that were passed along or sold from one family member to another. So we did individual to an individual sales because we thought that would help uh, provide us with the best data possible. Uh, so that's kind of how we made our decisions about the, the particular businesses to, to survey. And of those that, that we heard back, the, the number one um, ownership change uh, related issue that kind of stood out was uh, the financing piece. So um, actually working with, with the banks. So a lot of the, the businesses that we, we surveyed um, said that they had a lot of trouble with that. And the other issue that we found out was oftentimes the business owner has an unrealistic expectation about what the value of their business is. And that's important to know for what Bob had just mentioned. Right. Part of the reason you need to start thinking about this five years out is because what business owners might have kind of in their mind or they're thinking about what their business is worth is not actually the case. And if they start early enough, they can start thinking about some of those changes that need to be made um, 
to get as much money for their business as they possibly can and to make sure that it transitions successfully. So you have a little different twist than what we talked about a few years ago, and that is a more community involvement. Mm -hmm. And talk a little bit about what, what does that mean? Yeah, well, uh, what we've sort of found is that uh, in the communities that we work, if you want something to happen, it, there needs to be a, a, or it works best if it's a community-based strategy. And there weren't many communities around the state that were doing some things. There, uh, there were a couple um, in Spring Valley, Minnesota, for example, they had started doing this work over a decade ago, and mm. they had... They had received a grant and um, had an advisor that was working with some existing businesses and had uh, you know, a great overall strategy to do that. Uh, the city of Barnesville, Minnesota also started doing some, some things some time ago. But we think that it's really important for a community to approach this with many different players that can get involved. So it's not just the economic developers or the chambers directors that are doing this. It's really important to get um, bankers involved, and it's important to get the local attorneys involved, all those local service providers that can really, you know, could really serve to be a good resource. Um, one of the things that, that we've been learning through our business retention work is that a lot of the businesses that are out there, most of the businesses that are out there don't have a succession plan already in place, mm. and they, um, might not even have a business plan already in place. And if you don't have those things, it kind of makes those next steps, um, you know, that much more difficult to do. So we're really sort of <clears throat> preaching that, uh, uh, you know, by having the community get involved, they can kind of help get the word out, you know, offer workshops and, and resources and kind of let business owners know that there are people out there that want to help, um, help solve this issue and help everyone um, everyone be successful. Do either of your programs help identify personalities? And the reason I ask that because I've seen some businesses that had great people working in them and they got sold to people who didn't have very good people skills and pow! So can you give advice? Do you help people that, that are selling to look for the right kind of person? I think a little bit you are. Um, you really don't have it. <laughs> in, no, the, in the end, it's 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 who, it's who does the decision. seller right. who does the seller want to sell to. Um, but I <laughs> think uh, what we see is a lot of the sellers are, are are driving who that buyer is going to be, and a lot of the things they want to see is they they want to see their legacy continue. They want to see the name continue as a as a good solid business within the, within the community. He's a good employer, um, provides good jobs. So I think they they are trying their best to make sure it's the best owner or buyer. Otherwise, it's going to come right of, back of in their lap business. again. Yeah. yeah, yeah, And you know, one other thing that we learned from our research as well is that this leadership transition uh, piece is very important as well. And the number one thing that um, that buyers are looking for is mentorship, uh, and that can come in the form of the the previous owner if that uh, person is is willing and able to do so. Uh, but it can also come from other business owners within the community. So when you're buying uh, a new business in a community that um, you know you may be new to, uh, it's important to kind of find a way to get plugged into those social networks that are already there and that social capital. Um, you know, you know whether it's the local churches or the Rotary Club or, or Kiwanis or whatever that might be. It's important to have, um, and this is why you know from a community perspective, the community can kind of get together and think about how can we deliberately go out and connect with these new business owners and try and help them uh, be su as successful as possible. Mm -hmm. I know from uh, a seller's perspective, and you're talking, talking about how you, how you can bring, bring resources together to help get a, a, a business to uh, uh, transition successfully, uh, we're encouraging a, a, you know, the formation of, an, a, you know, of a good, solid advisory team. Uh, for, at the community level, or well, at the it, business it, level, it, it ends uh, depending on the community. Mm -hmm. it, it 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 is uh, at the community level, but at at the business level too. I mean, you're looking for the right type of of accounting support, the right type of, of legal support. Um, uh, you know, do you have bankers or uh, financiers uh, in place that are supportive of 
of uh, financing the transition of, bus of uh, businesses. Um, you know, certainly, in, uh, you know, we mentioned the chambers. We're working a lot with the, with the chamber groups because when they go out and do their business retention and expansion uh, visits uh, uh, to their membership, they're finding out that business succession is, is, is a very um, hot topic right now, uh, a big concern of their business or they're hearing it from maybe the bankers that are the, are the uh, uh, chamber members as well, that they, they're concerned about some of their businesses that aren't positioned to be able to transition that business. They want to get them hooked up with the expertise out there to be able to transition the business. If, if I'm a small restaurant owner <clears throat> and I'm getting ready to sell in two or three years, some of the advice I'm going to get is free but some of the technical support out there might have a cost to it. How, how do you deal with that? How do you help them? Well, um, uh, that uh, gives me a chance to, to mention that, you know, a lot of those services do cost money. When you're going to a, an, an accountant or an attorney um, or a business valuation or appraiser or even somebody that will facilitate that process to you, those are services that are offered at a cost or they're provided at a, at a cost. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that, that's held a lot of business owners back is uh, the perceived cost. And, and when I say perceived cost, it's probably, it's, it's a, it is an actual cost that maybe holds them back. Um, our organization and our span group did approach um, rural development this last year for a grant that would help um, cover up to 50% of those costs. Wow. For a business owner that's in a, a rural community ha is a smaller business, so under under 50 uh, uh, 50 employees, and we're hoping that that's you know a little carrot that you can hang out there to get some of uh, the business owners to you know take that leap as far as uh, business succession planning, um, uh, both uh, in our area and the statistics nationally show that there's only barely a third of the business owners out there that. Uh, have owners that are um, getting close to retirement have even got a formal plan in place. So Bob, how would, uh, if a business owner is interested in that, how would they contact you? Uh, you know, they could contact us uh, and say, hey, you know, what, um, you know, what are the steps? What do I need to do? Um, how, does, how does the grant work? Uh, you know. So they kind of, it, there's a grant that you have and they would have to sort of apply to see if they would be eligible and then mm. you would decide if they should get another, like another smaller grant, to help them out. Is that kind of how it well, works? Well, they would they would be able to get up to fifty percent of their of their expenses covered by the, uh, the grant that that uh, that we received, and it would help cover the costs of um, uh, business appraisal, um, working with an, a CPA and uh, with uh, with an attorney. And we're not looking at bringing somebody completely new in unless they actually need to have it. Um, we're wanting to make sure that those business owners, they, they may have part of their advisory team, group of advisors already in place, they're just not utilizing them, right? Mm. Uh, and that would be their accountant and, and sure. attorney. Yeah. Go ahead. You were gonna say yeah, something. well, and I was going to say there's, you know, there's all kinds of resources around the state as well that business owners can reach out to. There's um, an organization that's it's based out of Cleveland, it's called the Exit Planning Institute. And there's a Minnesota chapter. It's not for personal life, but for business. <laughs> yeah, for businesses. And uh, uh, that in, uh, that institute, or you know, the, the Minnesota chapter has a lot of business advisors that are there that help businesses, um, you know, of all sizes, from five employees or less to to more than 100. So that's a good place to go, and they can kind of help you think about where you know what's a good place to uh, to start thinking about. I would guess if you didn't have that plan in place and you ended up just closing, that's pretty a pretty big loss to the the owner, isn't it? Because you're going to end up just selling off your inventory and selling your buildings, and who knows, they may become a storage building or something. Right, and we, and we want to make sure that these owners don't wait too long either. From a perspective of, you know, the baby baby boomer, uh, they don't think that they're ever uh, they're gonna, they're going to be alive forever. And that's, <laughs> yeah. not, that's not the we case. Aren't. <laughs> we don't want to see their exit plan being them being um, ruled out, their lives. out in, a, in sure. a stretcher and then having that burden being placed on, on their family and to decide what's going to be done with the business then. Yeah, and, and from a community perspective, this is important because uh, one another thing that we learned through this research is that 
uh, about uh, two thirds of the businesses that we interviewed had increased the number of employees that uh, that are located at the business since they had uh, taken the business owner and about the same percentage had increased their sales. Um, so it's not just retaining the business, it's actually expanding the, you know, their local economic contribution um, as well. And in addition to that, from a community perspective, uh, one thing that we found out was of the, the business owners that, that responded, um, about a third, 33% were uh, people that were new to the community. So I know Ben Winchester uh, with my center has been here before talking about uh, newcomers in, in rural Minnesota. And what we found out was about 33% either bought the business and then moved to the community or, or, or vice versa, uh, moved to the community and then, and then bought the business. So these are people that are new to the community and you know they're bringing kids to, to attend schools and so forth. So it has all different types of benefits, not just economic. It's a real big commitment to buy a business. Well, it is. And yeah. you've mentioned this a couple of times now that the reason this is becoming so critical is we have this group of baby boomers who are getting ready to exit these businesses. Do you find there's another group of young people willing to come into most of these businesses and work the six, seven days a week that it takes? Oh, I, th I think so, yeah. That's encouraging. Yeah, you know, you hear about the, uh, you know, maybe the family owned businesses and the changes from generation to generation. And, you know, and the statistics hold true that, you know, you, uh, the success rate for a family business transitioning is, uh, declines with, with each generation. But overall, I think there's still, there's a lot of good potential buyers out there, dynamic people, smart people, that that's, that's will be encouraging. very successful. Yeah, yeah and, and there's some, uh, you know, different approaches that a community can take, come out, kind of a community development approach to encourage younger people getting into uh, the, you know, the business owner field as well. Thank you for jumping on, guys. It's a very, very interesting topic and very timely. Appreciate it. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. You've been watching Lakeland Currents, where we're talking about what you're talking about. I'm Ray Gildow. So long until next time.